15 days in his bulla territory just kilometers from israeli air strikes reporting amidst the crossfire strikes within the sky big south here and israel's escalating war a war reporter's unmissable view Ashraf Wani's first hand account I saw the war Welcome to this very special episode of Battle Cry over the last one year this channel has been more watched than any other when it comes to the Israel at war story just days after the Hamas attack last year India today had the first team of reporters on the ground and this year as an escalation began afresh between Israel and Lebanon with that big story over the exploding pages one journalist dashed to Lebanon a country he was familiar with because he was there last year as well and welcoming him back after his second stint of war reporting is my senior colleague Ashraf Wani Ashraf very good to see you back safely but it is not safe in Lebanon we are going to talk today on battle cry about your experience and what you saw first hand because ashraf and i have both reported from the war zone there and we can tell you that reporting it from all the way here in india is completely different from seeing it there for yourself i am the first international journalist from india today who is at the hezbollah headquarters here in south india behind me you can see sayed hasan nasrullah was under ground almost 15 feet below the ground 2000 pounds of bombs dropped on this building by the f-15 uh, warplanes During the last 24 hours, 200 aerial strikes were carried out by the IDF, including this one behind me. You can see the situation of the building which has been hit by the Israeli bomb. Just a few moments back, an aerial strike was carried out on this uh, building and not only this one but even in the right and left if you will see the uh, fume of smoke coming out from these infrastructure and buildings and this road has now been stopped because on the both sides of the road there are aerial strikes currently going on there are reports of more than 25 uh, people had been killed in these attacks here in the southern suburb of Beirut During last 24 hours, 200 aerial strikes had been carried out by the IDF or we can say Israeli defensive forces in the Lebanon and 150 of them only in the South Lebanon. I am currently in the war zone in South Lebanon and you can see the impact of these air blasts or we can say missiles from air or air bombing. And those were just some of the moments from the vast amount of conflict reportage that Ashraf Wani has been doing in Lebanon. Who knows, he may even head back there very soon, depending on what takes place. Ashraf Waif, my first question to you is, what is the current situation there? Uh, the reason I ask this is, even though we are all reporting it, agencies are there, hundreds of journalists have entered Lebanon after you went there, following the exploding pages, as far as ground reporting is concerned, that perspective is very different. What is the situation there right now? Absolutely, Shu. Basically, most of the people, particularly in the India, believe that this war is fresh between the Lebanon and Israel. Mm. But on the first day when Hamas attacked Israel on 7th of uh, October 2023, the war between the Lebanon, particularly Hezbollah and Israel, started on that moment only. Because... Hamas 
not did that operation aksa flood alone it was a brainchild mm. and it was a strategy of hezbollah they trained those uh, hamas uh, fighters who infiltrated into israel and also i reported last year that also not only they came from the south of the uh, uh, israel mm. they also entered from the north of israel and even i went on that first day 8th of october to that particular point where hezbollah had managed to remove those heavy and tall uh, cement uh, blockades mm. to make their way and in fact um, some people may recall that story of 9th october or to, to uh, 20, uh, 10th october of 2023 when i first visited to that spot after me al jazeera arabic team just mm. after half an hour probably they watched somewhere on the india today social media and they reach it to the same support that vehicle was targeted by the drone strike mm. all the four journalists including driver yeah, okay. got killed that yeah. was the first casualty of journalists mm. in the uh, israel lebanon war on 10th of october 2023 so since then this war between hezbollah and the israel is going on and more than what the israel confirms is more than 8000 rockets had been fired by hezbollah but mm. most of them uh, came unnoticed you see why on same uh, period near about 60 to 70000 habitats from the north israel uh, uh, left the area yeah. and went to the safer Correct. locations and uh, uh, only the target of hezbollah was then the uh, uh, military presence whatever was in the north but this war took the twist when almost all israel thought probably they have now damaged enough of hamas now they look to focus on hezbollah mm. it started from 17th of september when pager blasts mm. uh, blasts took place and on that day that you have covered so much wars and so much conflicts you know it was something new for entire world yeah. that kind of a uh, attacking on any enemy or any uh, group uh, that brought also in my mind in our channel's mind that we should follow very keenly this story mm. and should go on ground on that day i decided i should return to the lebanon and luckily when i was there then everything abruptly happened yeah. first top leadership of hezbollah was eliminated you you were right you were there not yes. very far away when it happened yes absolutely because before that it was started by the idf when they started eliminating first the top leadership yeah fawad shukur ibrahim then others and finally the day when i was there when hezbollah headquarters was bombed yeah. with something unusual i have not ever in, seen in fact i want to put those visuals on our screen right now of yes, the of you at the hezbollah headquarters yes, yes. you were among the first journalists there just that building had been bombed every other building around was actually intact what did you see over there i was very keen personally also to know what was the difference in this uh, attack yeah. as compared to previous attacks which were carried out by idf across the lebanon and across the uh, uh, across the gaza one of the doctors he is the senior most doctor in the uh, beirut uh, and director of their main hospital mm. in the beirut he said to me that first of all this bomb as you reported more than 2000 pounds in weight then it can penetrate 15 slabs or we can say 15 story house and it did not explode in the air mm, mm. it then penetrates into land at least 30 feet deep inside yeah. land like a bunker then bunker. it yeah. then it blasts and whatever is around that all came it uh, in its uh, pressure and mm. it is uh, uh, it is a uh, blast yeah. and damage Collapses, is more and yeah. more collapse yeah. everything collapses around it so uh, you said that uh, the hezbollah headquarter blast and also what what the people and the expert said me there that first time they have seen because there were so many wars between the lebanon and uh, israel that red smoke came out from that blast uh, otherwise it is black smoke which, which comes out and third one was that it was so huge it was just looking it is fire everywhere even they have seen in the 70s and 80s those uh, blasts and mm. bombs which are creating fire and everything burns around but this was not that it has so much powerful impact six buildings in the, around that hezbollah uh, in uh, hezbollah headquarters. headquarters had completely got fettered on the on the society i want to i want to talk about the moment when hasan nasrallah the chief of the hezbollah was killed 
when did you first hear about it? Because you were there, you were in southern Lebanon, you were, uh, you know, outside Beirut. Uh, where were you exactly? When did you hear about it? What was your first reaction and what was the mood in the country? Because the Hezbollah uh, is a group that is also part of the government political system in Lebanon. The people there, uh, you know, it enjoys a lot of support as well in the southern part of Lebanon. So what was the init initial reaction? Actually, I have seen, when I was there last year, even this year, uh, there were so many strikes going on, not only in the southern part of the Lebanon, but yeah. also in the south Beirut, which is the city. Uh, you could have heard a little bit of, because uh, something unusual what comes in these airstrikes, abruptly it comes a small voice, mm. then there is a blast. Uh, no uh, one can assess when it is going on and where it will be the next target for strike. Because within moments, you can, I have captured so many, one of uh, that, uh, we, what we have captured, uh, one of the strikes on the India Today camera that will, uh, we will shoot our viewers. Uh, when that thing happened, I was in a hotel. I was just, it was an afternoon, yeah. probably after finishing my day's work, I was in the room. I heard a big bang, not too much, but big bang. It was something different, unusual, what I have witnessed so far uh, there in the mm. uh, Beirut and Lebanon. Uh, I went to the hotel manager, I told him what happened. He said, I, saw, I also saw all the people around in the hotel rooms were opening the windows, what has happened, what is happening. And there was some hue and cry and people were saying, Dahiya has been targeted, Dahiya has been targeted. Then I rushed immediately to the top of the slab of that hotel. It was 17 or 18 floors mm. uh, to, um, high. When I went to top, I saw it is subtle red smoke coming out from that. In the place. distance. In the distance. I personally rushed it with my uh, this mojo cam and uh, I told one, one a driver was with me he said we can't go there all traffic is coming from that side I tell told him keep vehicle here we will go by foot mm. I was trying to reach it was hardly a uh, distance of one kilometer mm. uh, I tried I did one kilometer is not too long yeah. I can go there but a flood of people mm. in the cars in the vehicles were coming out till that day South suburb of Beirut was not equated by civilians and Hezbollah fighters. Mm. And no one was expected mm. that Hassan Nasrullah can be the target of IDF. And no one was thinking that Hezbollah headquarters will be uh, targeted in such a big way mm. that mm. nothing uh, leaves uh, behind, uh, left behind. Mm. Uh, and everyone was coming out and for that whole night we have seen thousands of people on the road, in the cars, small kids, ladies. Uh, everyone left his, particularly in that periphery where Hassan Nasrullah's uh, uh, residence and his headquarters was. Mm. From that area, all people left because they were expecting and that happened. Yeah. Uh, there were the, those, that strike was followed with the smaller aerial strikes in that area. Mm. And since then, then on second day, third day, fourth day, when I was uh, going inside the south suburb of Beirut in the car, First of all, my driver was not ready to sit for a minute there or to sit up there for a minute, but he was genuine. He was saying that at any moment, aerial strike yeah, will come, we will get... The drivers and the people have to live there ultimately. Mm -hmm. yes. Absolutely. And most of the reported I did in the moving car, in the running car, and we were mostly uh, moving, just capturing visuals in the south suburb of Beirut. And now it is completely empty mm -hmm. without any uh, people. people. Even Hezbollah people have mm. left that part of the Beirut. You, you know, Ashraf Bhai, we saw many of your reports and those visuals are playing during this broadcast of you in those abandoned areas, places which had just been struck by airstrikes uh, or bombs and, uh, uh, you know, obviously there's nobody there, there's a lot of destruction there. Now, as you and I both know since we've reported from there, there is, apart from the war and conflict itself, there's a lot of claims and counterclaims between Israel and Lebanon, Israel and Gaza, Israel and Iran, everyone. Now the Israelis say that the Hezbollah you know, uses human shields, they, they, they put their military positions in civilian areas uh, and uh, uh, you know, they, they, uh, they break any kind of war protocols, etc. The Hezbollah says that the Israelis don't care about civilians, they bomb no matter what. They, want, they, they, they try to get sympathy by saying civilian human shields, etc. But the fact is they don't care about any civilians who are not Israeli. You were on the ground. Are both these things true or is only one of them true? No, uh, both of them are, uh, I think, of, uh, are claims only. They, there is not any kind of reality in mm. that. At least when uh, IDF carries out any strike, they never look whether there is civilian or there is not civilian. That got proved in the Gaza. Mm. Mm. If uh, <clears throat> 41,600 people had got their killed, are all 41,000 500 people, Hamas, Hamas fighters. Yeah. And if 
they are all Hamas fighters. What about those children mm -hmm. and the women who are 70% of that casualty? And right. still hundreds buried under the debris of those buildings which were uh, brought down by the bombing. And same scenario is in the uh, Lebanon going mm -hmm. on. Particularly mm -hmm. it started in the South Lebanon and now in the Beirut and suburbs of Beirut. Just before leaving for Delhi uh, on uh, Monday, or Tuesday, there was a rescue operation going on in the suburb of Beirut because, uh, uh, as the IDF claimed that they have also bombed that uh, location, that uh, building of Hezbollah, where newly their successor of the Hassan Nasrullah was. Yes. In fact, there is uh, also an input that probably one of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard commander is also there. For three days, the fire service people and the uh, medicos and the other uh, rehabilitation groups of mm. the Lebanon were trying to rescue and remove the debris and see what is inside that. For three consecutive days, they were not allowed there. And on the Monday, that rescue team was uh, again uh, targeted mm. and 10 fire service officials of Lebanon got killed in that. Mm. They have to nothing to do with the Hezbollah and other people. Right. They are the rescuers. They can work for the rescue of Hezbollah, the rescue of the idea. Mm. And also that one of the important things what uh, come, uh, come out from that. <coughs> if a fighter is a Hezbollah, he has a family. He lives with the family, maybe in the south of Lebanon or in the south Beirut. If he is committing any crime against Israel, mm. that does not mean his whole family is involved. Whether there are 30 people in the family, his uncles, his nephews, his sons, his uh, other relations, whatever, are in the family. When they are targeting a single person, uh, IDF never thinks about the other people who are in that periphery. That is one different attitude of the IDF. As far as Hezbollah is concerned, it is not hidden anyway. It was created in the 80s and then uh, there is a mass support of those members and their families who mm. are on the target now. But all are not with the Hezbollah. Maybe some of them are, but some are living already from centuries in the South Lebanon. We can't say they are also Hezbollah people. Uh, in the war, we have seen that even in our continent, when there is war, civilian infrastructure is used by yeah. the both, whether it is the army or it is the fighter group. So same the IDF is doing in the northern part of Israel. They have told the people, don't come in the area. We are, it is our military base. Same has been told by the mm -hmm. Hezbollah on the other side of the border, South Lebanon, that people should leave from these peripheries and they will be used as a battlefield. In, in, you know, in the, in, the, in the southern part of Lebanon, when you were, uh, uh, you know, reporting from there, uh, there are many population centers there. There are many villages in the Beka Valley, etc. When you travel there, and uh, the reason I ask this question, Ashraf Bhai, is because Lebanon uh, has often paid a very heavy price because of this conflict. Even though it is not directly involved, uh, the Israel-Palestine conflict has always had a, uh, a devastating Im impact on Lebanon. There have been two invasions so far. Uh, right now, while you were there, a, a kind of a limited ground operation already began. Uh, and therefore, uh, you know, it, it, uh, like you rightly said in your first answer, the people of Lebanon are in some ways used to what they're seeing right now. What do the people say? What do the common people in southern Lebanon, what is their mood? Are they fed up? Are they, are they just, uh, you know, are they just uh, used to this? How do they carry on with their lives? You know, I want a war reporter's perspective on that. How do they pick up the pieces sure, and move uh, on? Actually, they have not any kind of option except to remain calm or to save their lives. Yeah. They can't raise any voice against Hezbollah. They have not that kind of a backing from any local government which can protect them or can give them voice. They have understood that as long as they are with Hezbollah, they mm. are safe or they, their border could be defended. Mm. That is the one reason. Another reason is about the society of the Lebanon. It is a multicultural, yeah. mixed society as compared to other Gulf countries. There are Christians, there are Sunni Muslims, there are Shia Muslims, there are much flow of the European people of any caste and any creed. Uh, it is a famous tourist destination of the Gulf in mm. the Middle East. Most of the people come for the parties, for the enjoyment yeah. uh, to that country. That uh, completely that business or we can say that economy has got hit. Mm. And already you are aware that there are crises going on in the government. There is a caretaker government. Yes. There is not yes. a permanent president. Uh, the uh, country is in the economic, uh, we can say, bubble down. Mm. All the uh, currency is doing very bad. 
So that kind of all problems are there, so people have not option. And also being the mixed color and being away from the fights and wars, the people just avoid these, they just keep... One thing interesting, you can ask other reports also. If you just go to anybody, just talk with me, tell me your story. They are never ready to face camera. Mm. They do not want to say anything. They just avoid, you will go to any, civil without talking to anyone, they will just avoid the camera. If people are um, getting displaced, they will hide their faces, they will hide their uh, positions, but avoid cameras. That shyness is also one thing there. But one of the points what you asked me when you went to anywhere something happens, do you know what happened during the recent, after recent strikes in the Lebanon? Basically, everything of security control was taken by the Hezbollah when something happened there. Hezbollah people, whether they are from their security service or from their fighter side, they were reaching to the support to assess the situation. And, but IDF has completely shattered their mm. system of work. Now, if strike goes on anywhere, Hezbollah fighters hesitate to reach there. So that the space remains open. Any journalist can go, go and report. No one will stop him yeah, or yeah. stop his access. So that kind of... But on that day, there is also danger. There is also threat because if Hezbollah fighter is avoiding to reach mm, any mm. Uh, uh, support where recently uh, that was hit or any bombing is carrying on, you know, they think probably there will be again bomb and we will come in the trap. So that has happened during the last few days and also the communication set up the other things what were the other means of Hezbollah to get connected with the people, to get connected with the yes. press. That has also got some kind of a damage to yeah. the last few weeks of strikes from Israel. And uh, you also mentioned something very interesting. You said, uh, you know, unlike perhaps the previous times, uh, the attacks have not only com coming from the air, but also from the sea. There have been, uh, you know, uh, the Israeli Navy has also been, uh, uh, you know, attacking uh, Hezbollah positions from the sea. D did you witness that? What was reporting that like? Yes, that was my last report on yeah. yesterday. Uh, actually, what has happened now, few months back, Netanyahu said that if Hezbollah did not stop attacking the northern Israel, we will turn the Lebanon into Sitoun ages. Uh, most of people did not took attention towards what he said. But now I think that he is implementing that program. Not only the Hezbollah fighters are being targeted, but the economy, mm. road infrastructure, other uh, infrastructure of uh, Lebanon is being targeted by IDF as they did in the Gaza. National infrastructure. Yes, yes, yes. De as they did in Gaza. So it seems that after finishing and devastating of the Gaza, now uh, devastation of Gaza, now they are starting it in the Lebanon. Two days back, uh, I heard, uh, I reported that mm. also. Uh, Israeli Navy has issued orders to the fishermen that they should not go to Mediterranean Sea. One of the fishermen yesterday told me that despite all this challenge, they went towards the sea for fishing because it is a big population near about 3,000 fishermen because it is the sea coast lo lo uh, most part of the uh, whole country is on yes, the yeah. coastal line. Uh, so many towns and cities, uh, there is fishing uh, business for the local people not only to provide for the people who are living there but also their earning so they said we went but uh, on first day we were stopped by the lebanese army the lebanese uh, naval mm. uh, staff naval army and then on other day when we went further israeli ship came small boats with the israeli soldiers directly headed towards us mm. and warned us next time you will head towards the mediterranean sea you will be targeted mm. so mm. they have stopped their work they are now crying that who will take care of our livelihood. Second thing, what one fisherman told me there that uh, he said being not any kind of a good governance setup in the Lebanon, many countries including the European countries and Gulf countries are say, sending aid to the Lebanon. But common people is not aware where that aid is going. Right. So that is not reaching to the people. Uh, in the uh, Gaza, it is controlled by every uh, supply of the humanitarian aid is being controlled by the uh, IDF. But here, that is not the issue. Right. Uh, mm. IDF cannot stop it. That can enter into the Lebanon, but its distribution is the big issue for the local population there now. Ashraf Bhai, uh, last couple of questions now as we come towards the end of this. Now to just zoom out a little bit because you were there, uh, you know, when shortly after the pager attack happened, you were there when the missile ha uh, attack happened from Israel. Since then, everybody has been waiting. You were there reporting in the aftermath of the missile attack as well about what Israel's response is likely to be. Now, 
sitting far away here in the studios, we can give our analysis and scenarios and, uh, you know, make all kinds of guesses. But as a war reporter on the ground, what is your best uh, analysis of what is going to happen next? Is Israel going to counterattack uh, Iran? What is, the, what is your sense of that? Actually, uh, since last one year, uh, Israel has read this war and their enemies uh, very lightly. They thought on the 8th of October when they launched operations against Gaza that probably within a few weeks they are going to finish the Gaza and bring back those hostages, hostages yeah. 250 mm -hmm. hostages. And Hamas will get crushed by the attacks and the bombardment. But that has not happened. That is the story of the Gaza. Same they thought probably by ag taking aggression of the uh, aerial strikes in the Lebanon, particularly on the strongholds of the Hezbollah, will calm the Hezbollah. That has not also happened. Yeah. Now, after the uh, missile strikes, more than 180 missiles which were fired from the Iran to the Israel, they th uh, thought we will uh, also punish the Iran. But it is not so easy and uh, so easy because everyone knows, you know, Iran is not a small country like Lebanon or uh, Gaza. Correct. Uh, they have a uh, well uh, uh, power and not only the power, but they have backing of Russia, yeah. China and uh, in fact, we can say North Korea also. So if Israel is going to do that mistake, this war will be the beginning of Third World War, number one. Number two, all the interests of America, particularly in the Gulf countries, are going to uh, get aside, and then its interests will be hit with that escalation. Number, number three is that somehow, somewhere, there, will be, there are people in the uh, IDF who may be thinking that without ha finishing Hamas and Hezbollah, mm. this kind of ac their action will be very devastating for mm. us. That has been proved during the last one week only. Yes. Or at regular base, 150 to 300 rockets are being fired. And also now the uh, mid-range uh, missiles yes. from Hezbollah and directly attacking the top cities of the main cities and business cities of the Israel that mm. including Haifa, yes. including Safe. So uh, uh, I think probably uh, maybe the U.S. President Biden may be able or and CIA generals may be able to uh, convenience the uh, IDF that probably it will be biggest mistake if you are going to take again any major strike against Israel. You had already uh, killed their many revolutionary guard commanders. You have already attacked their embassy. You are already attacking them in the uh, Lebanon. Mm. So probably they should not go. And also Israel has made it clear that yes. what they did, they did only uh, as a revenge attack on the assassination of Ismail Haniya as well as of Hassan Nasrullah. Correct. So far these two assassinations, they have taken those uh, missile attacks mm. on the Israel and also not in that way where they have attacked the civil infrastructure. They have targeted only the military bases and the uh, air straps yes, of the no loss of life apart so from one that, person. So that is very important and crucial time. Mm. And uh, in one word I will say to you, if they are going to target Iran, the Iran's response will be very devastating mm. and that will be the beginning of Third World War, no doubt because it is not going to then yeah. uh, calm down the war. It and is. still there are 50-50 chances, either the both parties, Lebanon, if the intervention of France, uh, USA, Qatar on, and Egypt on the other side, probably there will be the pause in the war for yes. some time, but the uh, strategies to target and to attack for, to each other's uh, interests and each other, that will go on. It's an ominous uh, note to end this discussion on, but uh, uh, I think uh, uh, there is, uh, there is uh, good and bad in what Ashraf Bhai has just said. And remember, this is the uh, analysis and the word of someone who's just spent nearly a month on the front lines in southern Lebanon. So uh, when Ashraf Wani says uh, anything can happen, but if there is a reaction, it will be devastating. It could be even World War Three. Uh, the possibility perhaps of a ceasefire now uh, becomes a little larger. And I think given what we've seen over the last one year, we should all be hoping for a ceasefire and an end to the hostilities. Remember, Prime Minister Modi has been, uh, has been advocating that and putting on the table India's position on this repeatedly that uh, hostilities need to end 
and that there needs to be some kind of a mutual ceasefire at the very earliest. Ashraf, thank you very much. It's so good nice to see you back thank safely you here uh, in India. And uh, remember that Ashraf is a seasoned war reporter. He's based in Kashmir, and he always flies off uh, to conflict zones uh, whenever something breaks out in the world. And there's a very good chance that he may be back in Lebanon or Iran or Israel anytime in the next few months, depending on where this war actually goes. Because that is India Today's guarantee. We report conflict, the biggest stories in the world, firsthand through our reporters, through our cameras. Thank you so much for watching.